Today, we have a classic discussion between two flat earthers. I have collected the best and the weirdest claims from their debates for your entertainment. They have some really funny stuff and it is amazing how most of them can't agree on a single model for the shape of the earth. Even when they explain their theories to their friends, there is no logic between the sentences and there are even problems jumping from sentence to sentence to just keep on track on the same idea as you will see. We have two characters. One is the blonde lady from the previous video that I did, Mrs. Mickey Clan. And the other one is Jason Q, which was quite difficult to find anything on the guy, but he's a typical QAnon believer that will follow anything that the drops will tell him to. What's unique about this debate and why I chose it for the kicks and laughs is the fact that Mickey is using the flat earth map for her astrology predictions which is uh, pseudoscience inside the pseudoscience but also she uses fictional maps like the infinity uh, worlds to go even more into astrology which is amazing so let's dive into it dude there's so much coming to me about this all right so let's just say the earth is flat just for giggles everybody it is right now i'm tra tracking the the line that goes all the way around the ecl the ecliptic line well when you zoom out of this ecliptic line and you look at who sits in the very center of that ecliptic line it is draco so draco Ooh. they the ccp who are draconian are proclaiming if this earth is flat and we look straight up and by the way my desktop is an image of how the stars look in the midnight sky. And this is not from the North Pole, people. So if Draco sits right here on our dome, right? So should I tell Harry Potter that his friend is sitting on the top of the dome now? Why would they take the very top of our Taurus, our energy field, right? The very top, because they're trying to block. They're blocking our free will. Our free will is our energy, our awareness, our willingness, right? It is who we are. It is our spirit, our soul. It's everything. This, my friends, is the St. Peter's Cathedral or the Vatican. And it is pointed in exactly the same points as Orion's belt. And every one of these star points that I plotted here is either an obelisk or it's a like a, an eight, an octagon type chart. If, the, if we live in a dome and the stars that we see, right, are mm -hmm. directly over us and the enemy stars are on the outer skirts of that dome, does that mean that we are actually being invaded by other life forms outside of the rim that we know of? Because when you look at that UN logo, it is a bull's eye, bull, bull's eye yep. over the flat earth with the olive leaves, which is, again, it was Jesus speaking to his apostles on Mount Olive. So are they targeting us from an outer rim? Do you know what I'm saying? Beyond Antarctica. Usually, flat earthers claim they have a dome, but they don't specify where the dome begins and ends, or how many domes there are, or why would she be afraid of extraterrestrials if she is protected by a dome which no one can cross. Okay, so I'm going to take this one step further. Do you guys, can you see my slides again? Yeah. Okay, good. The screen you looked at forever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you guys have seen this, this map. This clip is taken from another video with four people. Pay attention that the listeners can't help themselves laughing from this stupid assumption. Are we walking in agreement with this map or I mean... 
Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you basically have the, I don't want to trigger anything, but you know, the way we say things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I allowed to say those words on YouTube? What words? You have the earth, okay? Oh, flat earth? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I was noticing Gemini is here, and that's awfully close to the Gemini, right? Mm -hmm. That name. And it's the two hemispheres of the brain, <sighs> right? The left and the right. Okay. Yeah. Have you guys kind of looked at this? Almost looks like two lungs or two hemispheres of the brain. I mean, this looks a lot like a brain. Yeah, yeah it does. And then there's Anubis. Anubis is right above that, too. Yeah. I mean, like, these. Th there's a lot in this map. <coughs> You've got Horus, Atlantis, Lumeria. Valkyrie, Odin. Shows about the Vikings and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Aten is also short for Akaten. And Atum. Atum. And then you have um, Thoth. Thoth. Or Thoth, yeah. Nemo. Or Cyrus and Isis. Oh, yeah, Mickey. We like imaginary places that don't exist. Teach us more. Where would all the rest of the stars, and would that unlock any stories about the, because there's all this Greek mythology and Roman mythology about these constellations. So if I can line up one constellation on one planet that has very uh, many names we have heard, <laughs> Then I can start lining up the mythology and the Roman mythology and the Greek and, you know, the Babylonian, etc., and just see how they all lay over each other. So I did my best to lay out the map. I'm sorry, the constellations as they would look if I was sitting inside the, the you know, the firmament. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yep. So you're you're looking out and this is our view. You're looking out and this is the firmament. And so you're you know, the planets would appear that they're running this way because they're they're outside. This wow. okay, so this red line, that's the planets. That's the um the zodiac, okay? okay. Yep. Where is the moon and the sun? Why they always change places? Once inside the firmament, once outside the firmament, decide already. Well, God is on the right hemisphere, and he's literally, if you look at it again, he's literally in a red hemisphere. It looks just like, you know, the right hemisphere of the brain. So the God brain is the right hemisphere, you know. I was so curious. I know that each age has a different frequency, but people think we're going up in frequency. Raise your frequency, raise your frequency, right? Remember how everyone says that? Uh-huh. But I've had some scientists say, no, to be in a healthy state, you want to lower your frequency. You can't be a flat earther without being paranoid that they are watching you. Never mind who are they. Episode 11 will blow your mind because they're watching what's happening to people and they're tracking their brain activity when they enter into the 5D. It's... Because I think they're trying to get us to look up. Yeah. It's like when, when you brought it all into play, I'm like, oh, that's why we're supposed to look up. I'm like, mm -hmm. now I see. Because here's, here's the funny thing about like when, when people talk about like the, it being a globe and it's spinning out say, space, it's like, but, but everything's set perfectly. Mm -hmm. All the constellations, like everything's, it's a big clock. You it know? is. It's because, a huge clock. And the constellations are moving yeah. like a clock. Well, they move a little slower than the sun or maybe faster. I don't know. They move a little, little bit different speed. I think it's the firmament that moves. Jason must be the first flat earther ever that claimed that the firmament moves. I mean, if the firmament moves and it is connected to the earth, then the earth moves. How can it be? They all claim it's stationary flat plane. I know. That's it what I like, It spins like a big, like a... Uh... Like a planetarium. Like well, you'd have like big out thing. There, yeah. And if anyone out there hasn't looked at both theories yet, the flat earth and the round earth theories, let me just ask one question. If if the earth is rotating around the sun like this, right, and every other planet's got its own rotation around the sun, then why are they always, why are the planets always the same distance from us? They don't. They move. But you would have known if you checked the science behind it. Oh. And why are the planets doing these retrogrades that look like this? And they're always the same distance away. They would be, always. they would go dark. You wouldn't see Saturn yeah. for a while because it'd be going around the sun, right? While we're, while we're trailblazing through space, going around our, they would be all over the place. I want to yeah. do like a 3D model to just show people this is not what the stars would look like if yeah. we were moving like this. And, and also there's this document right here, right? Uh-huh. It's the, it was it the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model. It's by NASA. It's reference publication 1207 1998. 
Mm-hmm. In the first paragraph of the summary, it says, this report documents the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. They knew. They knew. Here comes the regular evidence for people who don't understand the difference between assumption and reality. Yes, science assumes things to simplify the models, but we know in reality there is no fully rigid plane and so on. There's so many confessions coming forward too. People on their deathbed saying, I was at NASA, we were deceiving you. Of course, because NASA in Hebrew means to deceive. Oh, does it? Yes. I didn't know that. NASA is just a name, which is built from a shortcut of the full name. And let's assume for a second, the shortcut has a, some kind of hidden meaning. Why in Hebrew? Why not in Spanish? Who cares if something sounds like another something in a different language? It doesn't mean anything. It is hard to pick a name without the world sounding like another language. This is like one of the biggest pointless evidence for flat earth ever. Yep, sure does. And, and this is the only document. I mean, I have a whole flat earth file in my, uh, in my pictures mm-hmm. that we could, I could go through and everything. It's like, it's all right there. It's- I, I keep coming back to it. Sorry, folks. Yeah. I never thought that I'd be a flat earther, but uh, <laughs> but, sorry. But, but it's the truth. When, when you- if it's the truth, it's the truth. You know, truth is starting to have such a clear frequency and resonance to me too that like I can almost tell who's lying about what when I hear it. You know, which I think everyone's getting better at. We're getting tuned mm-hmm. in. Yep. Well, and also in the first chapter, I mean Genesis, they speak of a flat earth. It's 140 times it's in the Bible. Yeah. And the when firmament you, and look yeah. at our handiwork and all of it. Look up. It yes. always says look up. That, yes. And and Psalms 19.1, Warner von Braun had to put on his headstone. Why? It says firmament. And it's like, guys, why were they launching nuclear weapons at the moon and at the firmament? Because they're trying Operation, to break through it. Operation Fishbowl. They're trying it's to break like, through well, it. Typical mix of lies together with some proof. Yes, in the 60s, there was operation fishbowl and we did nuclear tests okay so what nobody launched nukes at the moon are you hearing yourself when you say those words mr jason so just for anybody who out there who doesn't have a clue what we're talking about we're not talking about some square where you fall off the edge yeah we're talking that's... about a round earth so what you're saying is your pizza world isn't square, but it is still a pizza world, right? Okay, where true north is always in the center. And if you take a compass and you you know move around, your true north will always be adjusting around that center. If you were in an airplane and you were always at the same altitude, you'd fly right off the earth, like you'd end yeah. up in outer space, you know? Um, there's so many con- there's so many people that have proven that if it really is at the arches that they're telling us, there's no way certain things would be in plain sight from, you know, distances from lasers and photographs yeah. and images and so on. Um, um, but no, we're, we're talking about our Antarctica <laughs> being the outer rim of the flat yep. earth holding in the water of the ocean. And if you go look again, go look at the, you know, our Antarctica walls all the way around us. We're not allowed to travel past these walls, so we, yes. we can't go see it. And so anyway, exactly. so for the people thinking we're talking about falling off the earth, no. <laughs> Like round earth models since the 1930s in schools. There are people out there who are older in their hundreds or whatever can still recall the times they were learning about flat earth back in the day. So yes, yep. they have changed our history books. They have put that round earth on every single movie in every single classroom everywhere. When you have no evidence about your rule number three of flirt, you gonna like to flirt as MC Tone would say that's why it's hard to wrap your head around like how could so many scientists be fooled well millions upon millions of people have come forward about this including well, someone as intelligent as jason couldn't you make the lie a bit smaller millions of people really millions of people so when you go listen to both theories and you have to listen to both of them objectively open your mind you'll be surprised how i can't even prove the earth is round i can prove it's flat well, and there's the thing. When people say, is there round or flat? Well, it could be both. Because round is just a shape. Yes. Sphere is a ball. Right. Now, when you think of a sphere, it's like, 
they can't prove it's a sphere. A right. sphere, it, it, there's no breaks in it. There's no, if there was a break in it or something like that, you'd be able to see it in a third dimensional model. But if you, you I could draw a circle on a piece of paper right. and you could put it up and say, well, what's that? Then you look at like, when you look up at the moon, it's like, okay, there's a moon. It's it, okay, it's round. Yeah, but is it a sphere? Right. There's no depth. You can't see depth in a sphere because there's no breaks. Right. So how do you know that that's even true? Right. You don't. You don't. And, and, that's, and that's what they did. Let Earthers have issues with uh, making the difference between 2D and 3D shapes. And this guy can't even see in 3D, apparently. And now, it also it goes, could be yeah. a much larger sphere than what they're telling us, moving at a much slower pace, like the size of Jupiter or something, you know? But, like, what they're telling us and how fast it's moving, it's supposedly moving at 1,000 miles. I didn't, I didn't plan on getting on a <laughs> flat Earth <laughs> debate today, but, like, it just... The Earth is not moving at a thousand miles an hour. If it was, then you would be able to get in an airplane, get up above, you know, at a certain, you know, height, and then the Earth would move while you're going, and you just come back and land. It'd be much faster to go, you know, yeah. in one direction well, versus the other. Well, and, and all you have to do is you you could do simple, you know, helicopter. Right. How can a helicopter hover? Hover. It it's should be able to hover ball. and then come yeah. down twelve hours on the other half of the Earth. Yeah, but but if it's if it goes up, then the ground should be moving. So in about ten minutes, it's not going to land in the same place. Right. But it does. So it's it like, does. how? It doesn't move. Even That's higher. not on the ball. The ball's here. It's not so much the, the whole ball, you know, it, it makes that big of a difference, but the lie. It's, it's simply the lie. It's like, if they lied to us about this, what else right. did they lie to you about? You can't because trust these people. You got to look into everything. Yeah. This well, I mean, when did they, when did they come up? You said 1930s, right? About 1930s, 40s. Well, lo and behold, which group was coming over here then? The Nazis? Right. It's like, remember, infiltration over invasion. They infiltrated our minds. Yeah. I feel like I'm in an emulation. Don't you mean simulation? Maybe? The three ring circus map. Cause I feel like I'm just done. Cause I was kind of walking a line. I was walking a line and I'm just kind of walking off the front line and I can go back to the science stuff and not sound like a kook. I just don't care anymore. You know, who says what? <laughs> You're not a kook, you got two strikes. You're good to go. It's so the circus we're in, man. I don't know if it's round or flat. I just know there's three rings, and that's all we know about so far. Well, we know a lot, a lot more, but yeah, yeah. round and flat. I mean, it's a pizza. I mean, round and flat can be a. It can be the same thing. That's the funny thing. But yeah, it's like <laughs> is flat. it really Earth that we are that we're on? Wow. So we reached a new level of stupid, where there's three rings apparently, of a pizza dome, and we are not sure if we live on Earth at all. That's or I just don't know how big it is. <laughs> I mean, you think about it, I mean, oh. they, have the, they have the map behind them. In fact, boom. Yeah. That right there, yeah. that, that is like a brainiac shower curtain right there. <laughs> right? Isn't it? Can you imagine the knowledge that oh, spans there's... that map? <laughs> that the ferment is what's what's moving it's like that's the clock that's the, that's the big procession clock because it, it just it just has to sound a little like exactly well instead of us spinning it's like it's just like our you know our our dome and, and then we hear like it's always western hemisphere western hemisphere where's the, nobody talks about the eastern hemisphere mm -hmm. that's another thing it's like where's this eastern hemisphere and i know where it is it's right behind his damn head <laughs> it really is right there see right behind his head is like the land of clones right, right there it's Earth 2, second Earth, right there. And that's it. It's just, when we look at it, it's like, you know, it just, it, it turns because, I, I mean, and these people that sit here and say it's a spinning ball and, and yet they want to, they'll, they'll die on that sword. But it's like, well, everything before the 1950s was flat. Then all of a sudden, you know, henceforth, the CIA and NASA step in mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's like, we're the kooks. It's like, oh, wow. The crazy guy has a story about how the CIA changed all the science all physics all math at the same time at the 40s and we all thought it was flat before amazing really like i said it may very well be round it's just much bigger you know and well when round, you just get yeah. into a state of observation they I, i'm i can tell you i can disprove round earth or at least that theory in too many ways to not be looking into this, you know? And every time these maps present, it just gives us more to find pieces of the missing puzzle. It's just more pieces, like. See, when we talk about like dimensions, right? In third dimension, you see length, width, and height. That's why you see like, like uh, 
a book. You know, you could see the length, width, and height of a book, right? But the thing is, is that it's because it has breaks, right? It's because it has creases. A sphere has no breaks. Like if you look at a basketball or volleyball or anything, like it's sitting on the ground, it's round, right? It's a sphere when you actually pick it up and you actually can feel it. Well, that was shockingly stupid. I hope you enjoyed this episode and see you at the next one. Bye.